Chapter 441 Blackbeard tells Ace that once you die, nothing else matters. Chapter 577 Blackbeard screams, this is my age. Chapter 578 Blackbeard says, this is amazing, I feel like I can control the whole world. Let me ask you one thing, what do these three quotes have in common? The thing they have in common is that they all tell us one of the biggest Blackbeard mysteries, which is what his master plan is. The same master plan that he's hinted at so many times throughout the story. I reread every single line every single chapter that Blackbeard was in just to solve this mystery and when I realized what he's planning on doing, my jaw dropped as I lost my mind. This is officially part 3 to the 5 part God Valley series so make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because the next two parts are going to continuously get crazier and better. With all that being said, let's get into it. <laughs> Throughout the entire story, Blackbeard always talks about this grand plan that he has. We see him tell Sengoku that from the beginning, he planned on becoming a Seven Warlord just to break out the Prisoners of Impel Down. This grand master plan of his seems to be going well as of right now. According to him, fate has led him to everything he's done. But the main question would be, what even is this plan leading to? We know he's already gotten everything he's wanted from the Prisoners, his territories, and of course, his Devil Fruits. But what is this all leading to? Well, I came to the belief that Blackbeard's dream and plan is to become the king of the world while running a world of true freedom and anarchy. Not only this, but also to live as this king in his own world for eternity. You see, Blackbeard always brings up how after someone dies, it's all over for them. He doesn't really seem to care about things like will, the afterlife, or even honor. I know this is true because when he fights Ace, he offers Ace his hand and tells him to join him. After Ace rejects his offer, Blackbeard says, survival is the only thing that matters in the world or in the shonen jump translation once you're dead nothing else matters so as you can see blackbeard truly only cares about worldly values and about surviving for as long as he can this truly ties in with almost everything that we know about him for example he stayed with whitebeard for as long as he could to survive for as long as he could he doesn't do anything unless he knows he'll succeed because he doesn't want to take the risk of dying and lastly he gets scared while in the face of death. Take a look at his face and reaction when Whitebeard is about to destroy him. He legitimately looks scared because he is. His biggest fear is to die, which is why there are times when we see his personality flip from being confident to acting scary. Another thing that could prove that Blackbeard wants to rule the world for eternity is that he cares about his era. We see that part of his plan is to begin his era, which is probably leading to maintaining his era. After he kills Whitebeard and steals his devil fruit ability, he says that the heir of Whitebeard is over now and that all the old generation is obsolete. He and his generation are replacing the old ones. With this logic, he should know that eventually time will pass by and another generation will pass him. So how do you prevent this from happening? Well, you not only have to remain the strongest, but you'd also have to be able to live forever. Blackbeard has a vision of the world and shows us a bit of this vision at the end of Marineford. There's a scene where he screams out to everyone to hear, quote, Oh, show it to the world, to all the boring, peace-loving citizens, to the marines, to the world government, and to all the pirates out there. This world's future has been decided. Yes, from now on, this is my age. This dialogue shows us exactly what Blackbeard wants to do and what he believes the world should be. First off, notice how in the beginning of this speech, he calls the peace-loving citizens boring. This shows that he views simple peace as a boring thing. He seems to want a world that is full of chaos, anarchy, out of order and with all of this himself at the very top of it. I'd also expect he just wants a world full of criminal activity and whatever he thinks is fun because at Fulahead Island, he calls his island a pirate paradise and that it ought to be fun. Blackbeard probably wants to make the whole world his pirate paradise and a place that suits him. Another thing that could prove that Blackbeard wants a world of anarchy and basically as a whole pirate paradise has to do with Luffy. We all know that Luffy and Blackbeard are two sides of the same coin. When they first meet, Oda makes it pretty obvious that they are the same except also the complete opposite. So if this is true, then what if it's the same thing with their dreams? We know that Luffy's dream is to become the king of the pirates because he wants to be the most free man. So what would be the complete opposite of this? Well, the complete opposite of this would be that Blackbeard would want to become the king of the pirates to rule over the world. Another possibility that would be the complete opposite of Luffy's dream would be that Blackbeard
Lord may want to become the king of the world to make the whole world free from an anarchic perspective. Either one fits in my opinion. I also think he definitely wants to become the king of the world and not limit himself to king of the pirates because he's just the type of guy that always goes a step further. For example, even though he already had arguably the strongest devil fruit ever, he had to take it a whole step further and get the strongest paramecia ever. So why would he become the king of the pirates but not go to the next step which is the king of the world? In chapter 440, Blackbeard mentions to Ace that he will become the king of the pirates which shows that it's definitely a part of his plan. I think he will attempt to do so but the reason for this is to ultimately become the king of the world. In fact, the title for king of the pirates may be the king of the world in the world that Blackbeard wants to create since it'll be a world of piracy and criminals. There won't be any world government so that would make Blackbeard the ruler over all unless someone else can defeat him. Another reason I believe Blackbeard wants to become the next ruler of the world is because he's brought up how he feels like he has the power to control the whole world. He also brings up how he's invincible and the greatest to ever do it. With this amount of narcissism and power backing it up, I believe it shows this is what he wanted all along. Now going back to what he said at Marine for, this speech also proves that he wants this dream world for eternity because he says the line, this world's future has been decided. Yes, from now on, this is my age. Notice how he says the world's future has been decided. He believes that he and his age has the whole world's future or fate in his hands. To have the whole world's future, you can't just have power, but also an enduring rulership for eternity. Once you die, your fate ends, but the world's fate continues to go on. The world's fate has to be an eternal thing because there is a never ending of days or time. This is also interesting considering the fact that the world's fate may actually be revolved around Luffy and not Blackbeard. Luffy seems to be the one who is bringing the dawn since he is the sun god. If you've seen my last part in this God Valley series, I bring up how I believe that Law is the moon god. I believe that he and Luffy were brought to Wano since they are sun and moon gods. I also state how I believe the will of D means the will of the dawn because for centuries upon centuries, the D clan have been inheriting each other's will until the dawn arrives. I believe that when the dawn comes, there will no longer be a D-clan because it will no longer be necessary since they already brought the dawn to the world. So with all this being said, what even is the dawn? Well, wouldn't the dawn be when the celestial dragons are defeated and when the truth is exposed to the whole world? Also, what even is the dawn in literal terms? Well, there's two main definitions and I believe that both define exactly what the dawn is in One Piece 2. The first definition is the first appearance of light in the sky before sunrise. Now what does this have to do with One Piece? Well, this has to do with exactly what will happen in the dawn of One Piece because at the time when the first appearance of light comes, there's still darkness from the night, the moon is still visible, and the sun's light is first shown. This is right before sunrise which shows that Luffy or the sun god isn't the only important figure that will bring the dawn to the world since there's a bit of sunlight, a bit of the moon, and a bit of the night's darkness at the dawn of the day. In One Piece, there will be the light of Luffy the Sun God, the Moon God Law, and the darkness of Blackbeard who will bring the dawn to the world. This is why Oda chose those three to be the new and final generation of people with the will of D. He chose to have the guy who represents darkness, the guy who represents the moon, and the guy that represents the sun to be the most important worst generation and will of D members. It is my belief that these three will be the ones to fight and defeat Emu and the Celestial Dragons. The reason for this is because back in Lost Flashback, Warzone told told him that those with the will of D are the direct enemies of the gods and that their people's goal is the very destruction of the world. This is the same destruction of the world that Whitebeard was talking about and also Odin. Another destiny of Blackbeards may not only be to defeat the celestial dragons but to destroy the world literally. I believe he will literally destroy the world with the power to destroy the world along with the other will of D members. Odin claims that at the One Piece he found out that there will be a massive war terrible enough to split the seas themselves. In other words, in another 20 years, the primary figures of this great war will muscle their way into the new world. So we already know that the primary figures of the great war that is coming muscled their way into the new world when Blackbeard, Luffy, and Law went into the new world. So now that we know Odin already got this part of his prediction right, what could he mean by a war so massive that it will split the seas? Well, I believe that it means in this war, the red line will be destroyed and when it comes down, the seas will be split. When the red line is brought down, it is literally destroying the old world to make a new one with no red line or nothing dividing the world and oceans. The all blue will most likely come and other 
things as well. So now, how will Luffy, Blackbeard, and Law destroy the Red Line? Well, it is to my belief that they will use their Devil Fruits to do so. I also believe that the ancient weapons will help out with this as well, since they are labeled as having the power to destroy the world. Okay, so now that you understand that I believe these three are the ones who will literally destroy the world and bring the dawn, let's take a look at the second definition of dawn. The second definition of dawn is the beginning of a period of time, especially one considered favorable. So the beginning of a new era will happen after the celestial dragons are defeated and after the red line is destroyed, or in other words, a dawn will come. Okay, so now the real question is, which era? After Emu is exposed and defeated, will it be Luffy's era or Blackbeard's? Since we know that their destiny is to defeat the celestial dragons and destroy the world, I don't see any of the three dying to a celestial dragon or during their fight with the celestial dragons. After the throne of Emu is destroyed, someone else might take it. This is where I start to believe that Luffy's final fight will not be with Emu but actually Blackbeard, as we know that Blackbeard's ultimate goal is to take the throne of the world, as he says excitedly in chapter 925 that the mighty battle for supremacy over the throne has already begun. This battle has officially started and it will officially end when Luffy defeats Blackbeard and all of those in his way of being Pirate King. To get the throne of the world and in the way that Blackbeard wants it, he will not only need to defeat Emu, but he'll also have to force Law to perform the eternal youth operation on him. The next connection with Blackbeard killing Law has to do with the real Blackbeard whom Teach seems to be based off of. This connection is pretty crazy, so prepare to be mind blown. So the real Blackbeard has arguably the most known and famous Jolly Roger in the world. Take a look at it and what do you see? Well, I personally see a devil or demon stabbing a heart. So isn't it almost like the flag is representing some demon killing a heart? And now you may ask, well what does this have to do with One Piece? Well, it has to do with One Piece because Oda may use it as a reference for Blackbeard killing the captain of the Heart Pirates. Not only is Law the captain of the Heart Pirates, but he's overall just represented by a heart. I mean, he has a heart tattoo on his chest. He ate a devil fruit that's shaped like a heart. He was saved and inspired by Corazon, whose name means heart in Spanish. And lastly, the coat that he wears has the name of Corazon on it, which again means heart in Spanish. So could Oda use the real Blackbeard's Jolly Roger as a reference or inspiration for his pirate story? He tends to use a lot of things, so I wouldn't be surprised if he used this as well. So now that we know how Blackbeard will most likely become immortal, let's talk about how this is connected with another person who also seems to be immortal. Before we do that though, remember to like and subscribe if you liked even one thing that I've said so far. So if Lost Devil Fruit actually is the fruit from a moon god, wouldn't that explain a lot how Emu became immortal? We know one thing for sure, which is that Whitebeard claims that Lunarians used to live atop the Red Line, where Marijua is placed. Assuming that Lunarians were extinguished by the Celestial Dragons and Emu, wouldn't it make sense that Emu forced one of them to make her immortal? Wouldn't it also make sense that the treasure of Marijua is there because a former Lunarian left it there? A Lunarian may have used the powers of the op, -op fruit to place the sacred treasure of Marijua in the Red Line. Maybe that's why Pangaea Castle is located there because they want to be right on where the treasure is located so they can't lose it or let someone else obtain it. Maybe if a Lunarian used Lost Fruit to place the treasure there, that's also why Lost Devil Fruit or the Devil Fruit of a Moon God is the only thing that can allow someone to obtain this treasure. It almost seems that Emu and the present gods of the world had to wipe out and destroy the old kingdom of gods to make their new kingdom of gods. Wouldn't it also make sense that Kaido named King King because the moon gods might be responsible for making people kings? It could either be this or the fact that a Lunarian was once the king of the world but there definitely seems to be some sort of connection with Lunarians and Emu. If there is a connection with Lunarians and Emu, it would tie in very well with one of the most famous Japanese stories which is called The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter, famously known for its main character Kaguya, the princess from the moon. In this story, there seems to be many parallels with Emu. First off, there are five nobles that are trying to marry Kaguya, just like how in One Piece, there's five elders who work for Emu. Next, Kaguya came from the moon, kind of like how Emu may have came from the moon, or at least from space, given their names Celestial Dragons, making it seem as if she came from space. Another connection is that when Kaguya went to the moon, she took the potion of immortality, kind of like how when Emu went to the moon gods, she took the eternal youth operation. Another parallel 
is somewhat actually flipped in One Piece, but it seems to still work because it's the same thing as in One Piece, just the opposite. So the fourth connection would be that Kaguya ended up losing all her memory. In One Piece, I'm not quite sure if Emu lost her memory or not, but we do know that she erased everyone else's memory. The last connection seems to be a bit more of a stretch, but still represents Emu in a way through multiple connections. In the story, Kaguya wore a feathered cloak as she went back to the moon and while forgetting her memory. So in One Piece terms, this may parallel Doflamingo as he wears a feathered cloak and as he erases people's memories with the powers of sugar. We all know how Doflamingo parallels Emu with him being a celestial dragon that rules Dressrosa, just like how Emu rules the world. He tricked the people by taking away their memories. Emu tricked the world by erasing the void century. Dofi wanted the sacred treasure of Marijoa. Emu has it. Dofi wanted lost fruit to also be immortal and then Emu is immortal. I think everyone understands how Dofi represents Emu in a way and the feathered cloak may be yet another clue from Oda about Emu's connection to Kaguya. Basically, if these connections are actual inspirations for Oda, it may prove that Emu did end up getting her immortality from a moon god. Some more parallels and hints with Emu and the celestial dragons could be from Drum Island. Uteron states that both Drum Island and Marijoa are parallels. First off, the chapter that Emu's name is introduced and when we see Emu sit on the throne is 908, which in Japanese, the kanji can be read as ku re ha just like Dr. Kureha in Drum Island. Dr. Kureha also symbolizes Emu since she's a life-expanding woman who lives in the Drum Island castle, just like how Emu may have expanded her lifespan and lives in Pangaea Castle. Something else that connects Emu with Kureha is that Emu in Japanese can be read as Buddha. The only two characters in One Piece that are known for the Buddha are symbolized by the maple leaf. Now you may say, well what does this have to do with Dr. Kureha? Well, because Dr. Kureha in Japanese literally means maple leaves. Another parallel in this arc could be that the 20 doctors of the Drum Island Kingdom could symbolize the 20 royal families of celestial dragons. So basically, if the Drum Island Kingdom symbolizes Marijoa, then I believe the arc foreshadows and symbolizes the ending of One Piece. In case you forgot, in Drum Island, Blackbeard comes in and destroys the kingdom. Dalton says how the citizens say how Blackbeard's destruction actually may have been for the better since Wapo left the country because of this. So maybe this foreshadows how Blackbeard would destroy Marijoa and the Celestial Dragons and how even though Blackbeard is a villain, what he did may actually be better for the citizens of the world since most people hate and are terrified of the Celestial Dragons. Now why would Blackbeard even be at Drum Island? Every single thing that he does seems to be part of some great master plan and him going to Drum Island and destroying their kingdom doesn't make much sense unless there was a reason for him to do it. Well, what if this reason was that he was trying to find the secrets of immortality, life expansion, or something that can heal any disease, even death? The Drum Kingdom is known for being the kingdom of doctors. Maybe Blackbeard thought that they would have some sort of leads to immortality or could have even had the secrets itself. Dr. Kureha and her everlasting age abilities could have definitely been useful for what he was looking for, but he may have not even found her because she's secretive and hides away from the public. Also, maybe Blackbeard also heard the rumor of the cherry blossoms and wanted to find something about them in Drum Island. If the cherry blossoms could heal any disease, then maybe they can even cure the disease in which everyone is born with, which is aging. Theoretically, if the cherry blossoms can cure anything, then they may even be able to prevent death itself. Blackbeard may have searched for any information on any of these subjects while at Drum Island. So now continuing with Blackbeard and Emu, there are some definite parallels that involve what may have happened with Emu back in the Void Century and with what Blackbeard may end up doing, just like how Emu killed and destroyed the Kingdom of Gods on top of the Red Line and then achieved her immortality from a Moon God which led to her rulership of the world and her era. Maybe Blackbeard will do or is planning to do a similar thing. Blackbeard may or at least might be planning to destroy a Kingdom of Gods on top of the Red Line, achieve his immortality from a Moon God or Moon God Fruit and then become the king and ruler of the world. If Blackbeard ruled the world, it would be a world of darkness just like it was with Emu. The 800 year reign of celestial dragons seems to be symbolized as the night with no sun, no moon, and no dawn. Just like how if Blackbeard ruled, there would be no sun god, no moon god, and no dawn. This leads me to my next point which is what will really happen with Blackbeard in the endgame. Okay, 
Okay, so basically, I believe the whole story of One Piece is symbolized by the celestial rotation of the Earth and Sun. It is basically symbolizing each day. I believe the ancient kingdom which worshipped or was ruled by the Sun God was symbolized as the daytime or as noon. It was the day because the sun was still out and shining. After this, the void century came. The void century is symbolized by the dusk because the sun is coming to an end. The pirate shanty, Bing Sake, proves this theory even more. There's a line in Bing Sake which is, evening comes, it's time to sound the drums. This shows that when the evening comes, or should I say, when the void century comes, it's time to sound the drums because the ancient kingdom and Joy Boy have to go to war and sound the drums of liberation. The next lines in Bing Sake are, but steady men and never fear. Tomorrow's skies are always clear. So pound your feet and clap your hands till sunny days return. This is referring to the people that carry on the wills of the ancient kingdom, possibly the D-Clan, for they should stay steady and never fear. Even during the reign of Emu, which seems to be symbolized by the night, the night of 800 years, the lines, tomorrow's skies are always clear. So pound your feet and clap your hands till sunny days return is referring to the reign of Luffy, the future pirate king. Once the sun god defeats everyone, the air of his will be symbolized as the next day. The dawn is the time frame from when the first appearance of light shows up, the first appearance of Luffy. After Luffy defeats everyone, it will no longer be the dawn, but instead it will be the day or the noon. So now you may ask, well what does any of this have to do with Blackbeard? Well, I believe something that Blackbeard will do will be symbolized by a celestial event. I personally believe that when Blackbeard forces Law to make him immortal, this event will be symbolized as an eclipse. Before I tell you why, let me first explain what a solar eclipse even is. A solar eclipse happens when the moon covers the sun. It's when the moon, sun, and earth are all aligned. So basically, I believe this will symbolize what will happen in One Piece because if Blackbeard kills Law and uses him, the moon god will get in the way of the sun god and darkness will prevail momentarily. This will happen after the dawn because in order for an eclipse to happen, the sun has to be fully out. This may be the beginning of the next day in One Piece, which will lead to Luffy having to defeat Blackbeard immediately after Emu. After Luffy defeats Blackbeard, the moon will no longer be in the way of the sun and darkness or Blackbeard will not take over the world. This will be the era that Roger, Odin, and Joy Boy have been waiting for. The day with the light never stops shining. Something that may foreshadow this is chapter 545, which is titled, To Sunshine and Freedom. In this chapter, Luffy and Blackbeard both lead the breakout of Impel Down, and the prisoners finally see the sunshine after ages of being locked up in prison. This may symbolize how Luffy and Blackbeard are both involved in the freedom of the world and in bringing the next day. I'm not exactly sure how Luffy will defeat Blackbeard after everything goes down, but I have a feeling that a guy that powerful and crazy can't stick around. I can see a situation where maybe Luffy defeats him, but I don't think Luffy will kill him because he never kills anyone. Maybe Blackbeard's ultimate defeat will be by himself. He may ironically kill himself with the overuse of devil fruit powers or by something insane. We even see how Whitebeard tells him that his biggest weakness is his own overconfidence and carelessness. These may lead to the overall downfall of Blackbeard as he ultimately loses to himself. So now with everything that I've now explained, this pretty much wraps up why I believe Blackbeard will kill Law and try to become the king of the world for eternity. Let me know all your thoughts and comments down below. Also, subscribe to the channel with the notifications turned on if you want to watch the next two parts to the whole God Valley theory. Also, we talk in the Patreon about certain chapters, so if you're interested, the link will be in the description. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching and please remember to have a great day.